Hello, everyone. Today, I want to go over a topic that a lot of people have been asking about. So it's something that's very pressing and a lot of people are having to, to deal with it. So it's important that we address it in the right way. So hopefully this will help to structure it in a way that makes it so much easier for all of us to deal with. And that is dealing with the aspect of academic dishonesty with AI and then different things we can do to prevent it and then what we have to do to address violations. So this is broken up. Uh, I've created an infographic and this infographic will be available on my website as well as through Twitter and all sorts of different uh, ways, Facebook, everything. So it's available there for you, but I'm gonna go through and explain each aspect of it. So inevitably this is actually going to happen. There is going to be a violation, but the more that we can do to prevent it, the better. So that's the first thing that we're going to address is different things that we can do to actually prevent academic dishonesty with AI. First, we want to ensure that students are fully informed about the policies. What are the institutional's policies on academic integrity, specifically dealing with AI? This makes it that much more important for institutions to actually have a policy. So we need to push our institution, whether it's a university, a high school, elementary school, whatever, there needs to be very specific guidance. If there's a student handbook, it needs to be in there as well. Not just some broad discussion about academic integrity, which is great to cover lots of different bases, but to specifically bring out and say, hey, the use of advanced AI such as chat GPT is not allowed unless the instructor specifically allows it and gives guidance on that. So that needs to be very clear to the student on an institutional level. That's the first part. Next is it's very important for you as the instructor to express your specific policy on the use of AI. This needs to be clearly stated within your syllabus. Uh, you know, if you can document this as much as possible, put it within your learning management system everywhere. So students, it's not a surprise to your students. They see it, they understand it, have a discussion in class, make sure that everyone is aware about your specific policy, your stance on AI. And your stance should be where it's not this thing that's just banned, but it's something that's used specifically. So they start to gain this AI literacy and they know that at some times it's appropriate to use AI, at other times it isn't. The key is for us to be very clear. Another thing that's very important here is to be sure to explain the reasons why. Why can't I use AI? Students are going to be asking this more and more as to, hey, I use AI on my own all the time. AI is so much easier, it's so much better. Why can't I use AI for this assignment? Be ready to explain yourself. Be ready to say, well, I'm teaching you some skills mastery. I'm getting you ready for something more advanced. In a future assignment, we are gonna be using AI, but right now, no, in order for you to be better able to, to, to see and understand what right looks like, first, we need to do this without AI. So again, Having that ready, being very explicit and telling them why is going to be very important as well. And then the next one here is to ensure that you incorporate multiple formative and summative assignments and assessments so that your students better learn and they also get better feedback. So it's not this thing where I don't know how I'm doing, and now I'm gonna take a major test. Things like that uh, cause students to worry, to have lots of anxiety, and so they'll end up having an academic uh, dishonesty, a violation. So we want to avoid excessive stress by, which happens when we only have one or two major tests worth most of the class points. We want to avoid that because the research shows that that leads to more cheating. So again, we wanna spread things out. We wanna provide lots of feedback so students know and they don't have to resort to academic violations. The next one here is provide scaffolding, assistance for students that are struggling or need more assistance. Again, AI, comes to the rescue here because you can use, you as the instructor can use AI to create lots of additional assignments for students that need more help, uh, study aids, different ways to explain the information, additional resources for that student. Scaffolding specifically to help that individual student is now very easy to create because we have this AI. So again, make sure that we're incorporating assistance and scaffolding to help those students so that they're better able to be ready to do the assignment, to do the assessment, as opposed to just resorting to AI at the last moment. And then finally here, remind students and give specific written instruction guidance on the use of AI for each assignment. So this needs to be in the rubric, it needs to be in the instructions themselves, 
There needs to be a clear understanding of what they can do with AI, what they can't do with AI for that specific assignment, for that specific assessment. The clearer we are at every step, the less likely they are to accidentally use AI or to resort to AI because we've implemented all these good preventative steps. Okay, having said all that, there are still gonna be instances where the student is going to resort to AI. So now we have to think about how we're going to address these specific violations. What we need to do is first uh, identify the different reasons that we have in believing that a student committed academic dishonesty. So the more evidence, or maybe you don't even wanna call it evidence at this point, but indicators, let's say, the better. The more that you have, the better to help ensure that it actually is academic dishonesty, that it is a real violation. So we don't wanna to jump to any conclusions. So we want to ensure that we have our, our indicators, our evidence built up to then make a decision or at least to go to the next step. So some examples of evidence or indicators would be that the turned in work is completely different than previous writing examples. So in class, they've been doing different types of writing. And now when they turn in a work, it looks completely different, utterly different as if written by someone or something else. So that's, a, that's an indicator. Next one, the final work does not match the tone, style, ability of rough draft. So lots of times we would ask for a rough draft in order to give feedback. And so from that rough draft, they go and improve it for the final. But if the final looks nothing like that rough draft, the ability level has jumped leaps and bounds, well, that might be an indicator as well. Next one, the turned in work seems very similar to the AI result that you obtained in testing the writing prompt. What does that mean? That means that when you give that assignment to the, your students, you take that writing prompt and then you yourself go into AI like ChatGPT, feed in that writing prompt and see what it gives you. And now you have sort of an example of AI text. So you can see the format, the style, the tone, the way that it is able to complete that writing assignment. Now you can compare that to your students to see, okay, wow, it looks almost exactly the same. Sure, it's written differently as far as some of the content, but the style, the tone is very similar. That would give you another indicator. And then finally, we have an AI text detector expressed a very high confidence level that AI was used. Now, I wanna make sure and be crystal, crystal clear here that an AI text generator that provides weak evidence. It gives, um, it gives an, sort of an estimate of, uh, of the idea that is written by an AI. It's still overall the reliability of all text detectors to include to turn it in. The reliability still isn't uh, that great. The validity isn't that great. Um, in fact, there's a recent uh, research study done by Stanford that says that if this is written, if your, if your text assignment is written by someone that has English as a, as a second or an alternative language, then they're more likely to come up as a false positive on AI text detectors. Why? Because their writing is more structured because it's not their primary language. So it's more likely to be a false positive that gets detected on AI text detectors. So keep that in mind. The an AI text detector results should never be used as a main reason to proceed with this. From there, you need to ask for a meeting. You want to talk to the student. Again, this is a conversation, not an accusation. Um, go through, meet with them privately, share your concerns, and then if need be, ask them directly. Say, hey, did you use AI such as ChatGPT or some other AI to, to do this assignment? Again, you're just asking. And if they totally say, well, yes, I totally did. Okay, well, then now you can move forward with the next steps, depending on your institution's policy. If not, if they say, no, of course I didn't, well, now you can ask them additional questions, follow up to express why you think that maybe they did, the concerns that you have as far as why their turned in work is completely different than previous work that they've done, completely different than the rough draft. And again, share your concerns, have that two-way communication to, to get to the bottom of it and to find out what's going on. When you're asking them questions and you ask them questions about the content of their work, if they don't know roughly anything about uh, what's in their paper, the less that they know, the more likely it is that someone else wrote the paper for them. So that's something to keep in mind as well. There you go. So that's sort of an, an explanation, a breakdown of 
things to consider, things to identify and address when we're talking about academic uh, dishonesty with the use of AI, and then different things we can do to prevent this issue, this situation from happening, as well as then how to actually address a violation or address the possibility of the violation. So again, this is an infographic that's made available to, to help all of you. So it's there as an assistive tool. Again, it's important for us to go through this process in a conversation to seek information to help the student as opposed to just directly go and accuse the student because then again this is supposed to be a developmental process but at the same time it's very important for us to uphold academic integrity i hope this is somewhat beneficial to you if it is i uh, definitely would appreciate a, a like and share and a subscription to this channel and i also want to make sure to remind you that learning is for life mm -hmm.